Here's what we're talking about today on Daily Blast Live. A surprise attack on Israel leaves hundreds of people dead. We're breaking down what this all means as a war gets underway. It's a holiday controversy that has America divided. Do you celebrate Columbus Day or Indigenous Peoples Day? Halloween spending gets spooky as shoppers go all out this year. What are the most popular costumes? A female bodybuilder in her 60s will be here live to share her secret to staying fit at any age. Oh my gosh. Get real. No. No. Y'all, y'all, y- just stop. This is a sham. It's finally here. Drum roll. Welcome to DBL. Many of you have been mourning. If you turned on the news this weekend or on social media, chances are you saw some of the horrible videos and pictures coming out of Israel. Hamas launched a surprise attack over the weekend. More than 1,100 people are reported dead and more than 100 were taken hostage. Some people are describing it as Israel's 9-11. And for a lot of us, this may seem really confusing given the history. And we all have questions. What is this war? Who's fighting who? What's gonna happen next? So today, we are gonna turn to Tori to help us answer some of these questions. So let's start with who's fighting whom. Perfect way to start this, because I know it's really confusing. I'm gonna keep this at the most basic level and also keep this a pretty nuanced conversation. To answer your question directly, Hamas, which is a terrorist organization, is fighting Israel and the military. That's it, Hamas fighting Israel. Those are the two names you sort of have to know. I'm not calling Hamas a terrorist organization. The United States State Department is as well. So those are the two players in the game. And if you, it, yeah, go ahead, sir. Well, I mean, my question is just, it, it seems kind of elementary, but just like, what is Hamas? Like, what, it, like, what would it be analogous to? Like, if you're talking to somebody like me that, that, that is fairly new to this, totally. like, how would you explain that? And a lot of people don't know what's going on because they just hear words and all that. So Israel's really small. It's the size of New Jersey. It's tiny. And on the side of it, by the Mediterranean Sea, is a strip called the Gaza Strip. It's tiny. It's filled with two million people in it. It's the third most densely populated area in the world. And Palestine used to control that area. Now Hamas in 2007 took over and they rule horrifically over. They are a Palestinian, Iranian-backed, Islamic militant group that doesn't care about humans, only wants to spread their message, and is a hateful terrorist group. Again, I'm not saying that. The U.S. Department and England has declared Hamas a terrorist organization. They have taken over since 2007. And this Saturday, they started a very surprise attack on 22 different locations by air, by land, by sea, and most surprisingly, Israel, with one of the best intelligence services in the world, had no clue but you, you you know you say 2007 but then why this saturday was there was there like an incident that sparked this that's why a lot of people are asking one we think they knew the t- intelligence was down but two hamas is now claiming it's after a mosque attack a lot of people think that's an excuse but they're claiming this is all in response it's a big response for a mosque attack we have 1100 people already dead israelis many hundreds of palestinians dead so for us this is a land grab, and it's going against Netanyahu, and it's a declaration of war. It's Hamas saying, we're ready. And Netanyahu responded and said, we're at war until you're dismantled. He's calling it Operation Iron Swords, and expect a full-on dismantlization of Hamas. And I think it's important just to note really quickly, just to really differentiate Palestinians who are very innocent, who've been victims for many decades in their own right, with Hamas, and that Hamas, if you read their pledge, it's to kill Jewish people. Correct. To, to it's exterminate to, the Jew- Jewish people. No matter age, gender, does not matter to them. Mm. So I think that's really I important to that, note. So yeah. if they're going to go out to for a human rights issue, in quotes, on behalf of the Palestinian people, why does your pledge not talk about them and their rights? Why does it talk about specifically wiping out the Jewish population? And that is just, again, to really underscore the difference between Hamas and so many victims of the Palestinian Who are people. caught in that yeah. tiny little strip. They Most leave. of them are refugees and they cannot leave. I'm not leaving that out of this conversation. That's real. But it's a nuanced conversation there, just to let everyone know. This has been going on for a while, right? Uh, centuries, Palestine yeah. Palestine versus yeah. Israel. What's behind this? Is it the people? Is it religion? Is is it land? It's Is there a specific answer? It, 
mostly land, mostly land. When Israel created a home state for himself, and by the way, Israel needs a homeland. We need it desperately. Guess when that was started? 1948. My dad was alive. So it's re relatively new. Palestine felt, or Palestinians felt, we somehow took over that land. They occupy, or there are enclaves in the West Bank and Gaza Strip, and there is just such fighting, Jeff, within such a small area, so populous too, that they throw rocks over lines in the sand. It's that small and primitive at this point. But Hamas just opened it up with this Saturday attack, and it's the most Jews that have been killed in one day since the Holocaust. So this is a huge, huge break uh, and a huge uh, declaration of war against the Jewish people. Tori, I really appreciate your nuance and your thoughtfulness here. Um, you know, this is close to home for my family. Absolutely. My husband's Israeli. His family lives in Israel. And a lot of people are struggling in the short term. Um, he talked to his uncle. They live in an apartment buildings. Every time they see rockets, even though they're in Tel Aviv, because to your point, it is so small. The sirens, no matter where, even if it's really south, that's where, or all the way up into the Gaza Strip, everyone immediately goes down to the basement. So what is going to happen in the short term? I know a lot of airlines are closed. Some airports are closed. What are people supposed to do in the short term, the innocent civilians on both sides? So first off, war is now on. There is a war going on. Children are being killed. Hostages are being taken. And if Hamas doesn't get what they want, they said they will execute hostages starting today. So this is a we are at the tension point. Israel is a democratic state in the midst of the Middle East, and America wants to keep it that way. So know that Israel has the backing of the full United States. He has, Biden already has come out. They have the full arsenal of our weaponry and will be receiving naval ships as of Wednesday, I believe. So we have the and full backing too. and funds yeah. as well. That's very important. I also want to mention, if you looked at a map, Saudi Arabia is right next to all this. They also are scared of Iran, which is Hamas, is back. They will side probably with Israel. Now you've got a real Middle Eastern issue with Iran. You've got Lebanon shooting from Hezbollah. You've got a World War III issue going on in the Middle East that starts to spread because of this tiny little area. That's what's going to happen. So everything that you're talking about is imminent danger. Correct. Um, and all of our thoughts and prayers go out to every single person affected. Um, you touched on the short term, which is happening right now in real time. What about the long term? Is you, there ever going to be peace in this region? Not with these leaders. I was there for the 90s handshake. I wasn't at the Rose Garden. But remember, Clinton had Arafat and uh, uh, Rabin, I believe, shake hands. That was a breakthrough. Well, that has um, gone on for so long that now it's gone backwards. So what I say to anyone who asks is we need new leaders. You need new leaders with new hope that have camps between Arab and Jewish children. Seeds of Peace is one of those where they can come and grow into actually becoming friends. So that, that to me is you just need new leaders. But I have to say, even if you don't like Netanyahu or what Israel has done, you can say we need a homeland and you can protect your Jewish friends at this time. Amen. It's a terrible, terrible time. So Amen. please look out for those yeah. people. Well said. Thank you, Tori. I love you. Love you too, Sam. Coming up on DBL, it is a holiday controversy that has America divided. Do you celebrate Columbus Day or Indigenous Peoples Day? And we're talking about the most popular pop culture Halloween costumes this year. Do you have yours picked out yet? Yeah, I, I, I think know. that was one of the questions I yes. had is like we're, we're saying like Hamas is going after Israel, yep. but Israel is an entire region, right. you know, so are they going after everyone or is there a, oh, really? uh, yeah. a security force? <laughs> That, that goes after Hamas. Well, no. That's Unfortunately, there have not been targeted mm -hmm. attacks. Mm -hmm. Someone, but I, what I mean with the IDF, the targeted attacks have been widespread through Gaza. Now, 2 million pe people in Gaza, 80% of those 2 million people are less than 18 years old. So you're pretty much looking at children. Since 2008, 33,000 Palestinian children have died at the hands of this conflict. 
So when we talk about Israel, and I stand with Israel, but I also stand for humanity and I stand with the Palestinian people. I really stand with the Gazans. They are trapped there. It's an open air prison. They cannot leave. They are Palestinian refugees. They cannot leave. Now, they want the blockade to be lifted. Tory touched upon all the different land and occupation, and I don't even want to get into that. I don't know enough about it. But what I will say is those two million people that are living in, in poverty want out. Now, Israel's side is we don't want to open up that blockade because then weapons can come in. Right. Hamas could, could infiltrate us. And so there's a humanitarian crisis. The UN will say that we need to fix that humanitarian crisis in Gaza in order to instill peace in Palestine. They will say that that humanitarian crisis is what launched Hamas. Um, but at the end of the day, the atrocities that are happening in Israel that happened over the weekend are inexcusable. It can be a complicated history between Palestine and Israelis. Isn't everything? Yes, but absolutely horrible what happened over the weekend. I can't even talk about it. Welcome back to DBL. Depending on where in America you live, today or may not be a holiday. So today may or may not be a holiday. In 16 states, today is still Columbus Day. Four states and Washington, D.C. recognize today as Indigenous Peoples Day. Some states celebrate both, while others celebrate something completely different. And for the rest of America, today isn't a holiday at all. So what is going on? Columbus Day seems to be fading away as, widely as a widely observed holiday after coming under fire from Native American advocates and others who argue that Columbus is not a man worth celebrating. But some still feel like today is is more about Italian American heritage. So DBL Nation, we always want to hear from you. We always want to get into the nuance. What holiday are you observing? Columbus Day, Indigenous Peoples Day, neither, maybe both. Go to dblvote.com to weigh in. What do we think of, of this controversy? What would you say, Jeff? Um, I think it's complicated, not for the fact that what Columbus did, right? No, no one's defending that. I think it's complicated that you're defending it 500 years and then you're judging it in today's standards. Everyone was conquered on this planet at one time or another, right? I think the American, uh, Italian Americans are very proud of their history. Not, again, not the raping and pillaging and all that. They're proud of what Columbus did. I'm half Italian. I grew up in a very Italian neighborhood. They're proud of all the inventors and discoverers and things like that. But in this day and age, I'm not going to put up a fight about it. Take the day away, you know, because if you try to explain to people, hey, it was 500 years ago, this is what people did, right? I'm sure any one of your heroes or heritage is guilty of this very same thing years ago. People are like, your privilege is showing, blah, blah. It's like, just keep the holiday. Keep it. I don't right. care. Yeah. I, I'll celebrate my own way for whatever I believe in, right? So not necessarily Columbus, just things in general. So. Yeah, that's where I'm at. It's, it's very d difficult because history, f by and large, is very unpleasant. Right. I yeah. mean, if, you know, the idea of putting a positive spin on this and celebrating Italian American Heritage Day is something that I would embrace and something I think a lot of people, because it's positive and people naturally gravitate towards that. Do people want to celebrate Indigenous Peoples Day? Absolutely, because there's something positive there. But when we look at everybody's culture, from anywhere at any point in time, the things that, that rival, uh, the, you know, tribes did to each other, the things that people that look just like each other did to each other throughout the. the but we don't of time elevate that with been, a day. Have, right, I'm not saying we've elevated that. I'm saying that when we dip, talk about history, we have to sit down and put our big boy pants on and understand that there's positives and negatives to all of that but that's and be what able the to have that conversation. Are doing. But with the help of a lot of indigenous leaders decades ago and universities, they decided to flip this and focus on us being educated on. On indigenous people and why they tried to make and are successfully making Columbus Day Indigenous People Day as a, an opportunity to finally learn our history. I am related to Governor Bradford. If you look up the pilgrimage and you look at some people will look at that and be horrified. I can separate and say, okay, that's interesting. Let me dive down my history, my ancestry and look at that. But at the same time, I'm loyal to celebrating and learning about indigenous people. Absolutely. So I think both can be true, but at the same time, I want to learn my history, even if that means the real history, right? that that's not a good thing under my ancestry. Yeah, I think when we're talking about uh, any holiday, especially a government 
a holiday or things that people have just so like blindly celebrated for so long, we think about what receives a holiday and what doesn't. And then when we talk about what's receiving a holiday, is that something that should continue on in today's understanding? So the idea that we would celebrate the discovery of America, which is still murky, um, but not really, um, for the discovery of a, a country or a land that was already very much inhabited, if we had to pick one or the other, Indigenous People's Day it is. Um, it's just, I think it's just, we're having the conversations that everyone was so uncomfortable to have. And when you have those conversations, you know better, so you do better. I mean, in our household, we're celebrating Thanksgiving today because my husband is Canadian. Um, but I think that it's important that you understand why you're doing what you're doing and not just blindly do it. Yes, and to know the educate the, 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 the history. The real right. history. To be educated. Exactly right. All right, let's see really quickly. We got 27% of you celebrate Indigenous Peoples Day, Columbus Day 36%, 32% of you say neither. We'll be right back. We were sent a series of questions by viewer Lori W about the COVID-19 vaccine. So we are getting the facts and answering her questions about the new vaccine. Our source is Dr. Pyle Coley, Yale Medicine and the CDC. According to the CDC, the new COVID-19 vaccine targets a sub variant of the Omicron variant. The CDC says this should also work against other circulating variants. Lori W wanted to know when should she and her husband get the vaccine because they want it to be most effective. Dr. Coley says if you're waiting to get your shots until November or December, you should rethink that decision. Your peak antibodies are about two to four weeks after you get boosted, but they don't just go away after those four weeks. You actually have a plateau. <laughs> if people want to time their shot perfectly for holiday travel, Dr. Coley says now is the time to get your shot. By Halloween, you'll have peak antibodies and you'll keep them through the Christmas time. A study from Yale Medicine says the updated vaccines are not expected to prevent all cases of COVID. The aim is to reduce severe illness, hospitalization, and even death. According to the CDC, there was a surge in North Carolina COVID-19 hospitalizations at this time last year and in 2021, with most of the spikes happening around December. Lori W. also wanted to know how long the protection lasts. Dr. Coley says after the initial spike in antibodies two to four weeks after you get boosted, you'll start to plateau. After about four months, you'll start to see a decrease in those antibodies. And if you're wondering what time of day you should get your vaccine, Dr. Coley has an answer for that too. So if you think about our immune system, it follows a circadian rhythm okay. and it's actually maximal when we're sleeping. So if you go in the afternoon to get your shot, that means that's really gonna sort of kick in most when you're sleeping. With your Verify Fact Check, I'm Megan Bratt. Welcome back. This Halloween, you'll be seeing a lot of costumes from pop culture moments of 2023. The costumes flying off the shelves the fastest include Barbie, The Little Mermaid, and Taylor Swift from her Eras Tour. Some other popular costumes, Oppenheimer, Janine from Abbott Elementary, and Wednesday Adams, of course. But the holiday comes with a pretty high price tag for a lot of Americans. A new survey shows people uh, plan to spend a record $108 on candy, costumes, and decorations this year. That brings overall Halloween spending in America to $12 billion. But get this, Americans will also spend an <laughs> estimated $700 million on pet costumes, <laughs> with the most popular pet costumes being a pumpkin and a hot dog. With a dog and a hot dog. I costume. would imagine you dress up your doggies. I do have pictures too. Let's see. Ladies and gentlemen, na 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 na, Batman and Robin. Cute. Huh? They, we I put, love it. We put masks on them, but they walked into trees, so we had to stop. And we, does it bother you that your pets don't like that? You don't what know do you, that. Do you they mean? don't look happy. You don't. Do you, a lot of times, they won't even move once once you put them on. And in like just a show of defiance, they maybe will not move. Maybe they're posing. Maybe they want to look. Yeah, maybe yeah, they're, they're posing. posing. No, I think that's the way that you say that I don't like this, and you <laughs> force it on them. 
It's Erica, do you agree that the dog seemed to not like this? Does Spike get dressed yeah, does Spike up? Get I, dressed? Um, Spike has a couple of outfits. <laughs> is, he, is, he, is he super pumped about those outfits? He just wears them. Yeah, that's not an answer. Um, that's not an answer. But when I had my Great Dane, he was not comfortable. I never really dressed him up in costumes, but I tried to put booties on his feet. Yeah, I love when and they do he that. he just... Mm -hmm. yeah. It, it they was like their paws to feel the ground. So that's yeah. a problem. Well, yeah, but when there's salt on the ground, it hurts their paws. She's right. But yeah. at least they know, like I'm touching the ground. She's protecting it's, their paws. Ha they're having like a psychedelic experience when you put the <laughs> paws on them. The booties. Yeah. Don't you love seeing the dogs do that? <laughs> well, I don't think I don't they know like why it. I'm trying to win this one. Because you so can't. Because the dogs clearly don't like it. <laughs> Some of them do. Okay. Right. Let's find them. Well, some of the <laughs> Halloween decorations that people are forking over their money for this year include the 12 foot tall skeleton skelly from Home Depot that has been wildly popular since its release three years ago and a new viral Halloween decoration that's following in Skelly's footsteps as the most coveted decoration. His name is Lewis and people love his not so scary sayings. Take a look. I am not a I don't I don't think I think that's very strange. I don't know who that's supposed to appeal to Jeff. What if the boys went at Lewis? I don't know. I don't know what's happening. What is the point Your of Lewis? Your boys don't like things like that, right? Uh, they like it. Layton they like does. Stuff. I thought they didn't like people. Oh, the mascots or was that when they were little little? Like huh? the big like bunnies and stuff. I thought like. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like people dressed up. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Jeff, I thought about you with the 12 foot skeleton. Now, is that too much? I mean, you got space. That's for much. people with like a nice. Jordan's been decorating quite well. She showed me photos. What do you think? How much did you guys spend this year? Well, you know what? Those each year we kind of get something like Christmas. We get something new to put out there. And then she took her old Halloween costume and put it on one of the skeletons. So we kind of oh, repurpose yeah. things. That's a good I, idea. You have to because yeah. it's so expensive. Yeah. We, my husband, everyone's like, how much are you spending? Nothing. Like, we, we've collected skeletons over the years, but my husband every year repurposes them. So that's just PVC pipes and paint. So oh I don't know, how much does it cost to go to Home Depot and get a PVC pipe and paint? That's, that's uh, Your husband really is cool. that's so a carousel. Yeah. creative. That cool? My husband doesn't call it decorating. He calls it his installation. Oh, it is oh. an art piece. He is an artist. It's an so, art piece. Yeah. But wow. yeah, it doesn't cost us much besides the spider webs. Now, how much time are we talking? Because that looked serious. I don't know how much time, I mean, he has a full-time job, but I think that's like his passion. Right. Just like everybody, you know, you like to make music recently. Right. So I think, and you're full-time, very creative with not only here, but with your stand-up. So I think if you find time to incorporate your passion, then it's your outlet. So right. I think somehow it just, he made it work. He started though, like, Gosh, mid September? Wow. And that, then brought, yeah, but he does it yeah. in the backyard and then he brings it all out. I feel like he had a sketch, like he had that laid out. Oh, he like, had a he sketch? Has, yes. Yeah, he did. He Jeff, did where you at with this? I feel like this that's is. That's a lot of work. And then with Halloween around the corner, that's a lot of like. You mean taking together? down? No, no, he's right. Taking down. Because right after, for us, right after, right after Halloween, November 1st, we put up our Christmas, Christmas stuff. So that's a lot of like and in and out. We took a page from your book. Last year was the first year we started, just like Jeff and Jordan started decorating right, because we usually would wait right like a few weeks till after Thanksgiving but we were like no let's just jump right on that train. I guess there's a, it's a good thing because if you're taking it out the plugs are already out it's there true. For it's a good point put yes. it right back I guess it might be a little yeah. easier but that's a lot of work seems like a lot isn't of work. it weird that we good haven't job. talked about the kids at all in this segment <laughs> <laughs> doesn't that show you that we are com we've completely usurped this you're holiday because right. it'd be like what is Layton gonna be yeah what are the Casa kids no. is your what no one's mentioned mm -hmm. anything about kids not once well, we showed dog pictures but Layton Layton loves Halloween, huh? He Isn't does. He? Yeah, Don't he try and cram him in. Thanks for yeah. squeezing him yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Us adults do, too. We'll be right back. A viral Instagram post claims people who weigh more than 200 pounds need a longer needle for vaccines injected into the muscle. One verified viewer emailed us to ask if this is true. So, let's verify. Is a longer needle recommended for people over a certain weight? Our sources are the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CVS Pharmacy, and Dr. Elon Shapiro, Medical Affairs Officer at Alta Med Health Services. Many vaccines, like the flu shot and COVID-19, must be injected into the muscle. For most people, a one-inch needle is long enough to get through the skin and fat to get there. But the CDC says vaccinators might need to use a longer needle to reach the muscle in men who are heavier than 260 pounds 
or women who weigh more than 200 pounds. The worst case scenario where you actually put the vaccine in, in stuff, instead of actually going inside of the muscle and solving the fat, well, your body doesn't learn that much from it. However, Shapiro says since everyone's body is different, not everyone who weighs over the recommended limits will need the longer needle. CVS tells Verify pharmacists use their clinical judgment when selecting which needle length to use for each patient. So, yes, the CDC does recommend that people over a certain weight receive vaccines with longer needles. Talk with your pharmacist or doctor if you have questions about whether you might need a longer needle. With your Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. Within hours of seeing the first almost unbelievable images out of Israel, misinformation started to spread online about what the United States was going to do to help. The claim that the United States swiftly pledged $8 billion in military aid to Israel, repeated in posts all over the platform formerly known as Twitter and seemingly confirmed in this White House press release. But we checked with several sources to verify this announcement is fake. It's nowhere on the White House or Department of State website and instead appears to be a doctored version of this press release issued over the summer announcing the authorization of U.S. aid to Ukraine in that ongoing war. $400 million worth, not $8 billion. The United States does provide billions of dollars in support to Israeli Defense Forces each year, outlined in this Congressional Research Service report, as part of a series of agreements dating back decades. Quote, Israel is the largest cumulative recipient of U.S. foreign assistance since World War II. And the White House is underscoring its continued support for the people of Israel. Talking about his administration's communications with Israeli leadership over the weekend, President Biden said, quote, we'll make sure that they have the help their citizens need. So we'll keep an eye out for verified announcements of next American steps. With your Verify, I'm Abby Larico. Welcome back to DBL. We love sharing your comments. Uh, in regard to Halloween, Jay Kim says, can't wait to see the panel's costu costumes this year. Ooh, we can't say. Yes. But it's good. Yes. I'm, I'm excited. Who's most excited about their costume? I'm most excited about Jeff's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Got to stay tuned for that. If you're leaving us, you can watch the second half of the show online. Watch on YouTube, dailyblastlive.com or our app. But if you get the second half of the show where you are, here's what's ahead. A female bodybuilder in her 60s will be here live to share her secret to staying fit at any age. And Taylor Swift skips game day in Minneapolis. But we're talking about why the hype around her rumored romance with Travis Kelsey was still there. You don't have to be a pumpkin spice fan to feel like you need a little extra boost this time of year. It's been the topic of a lot of conversation we're seeing online. Why am I so tired? Are there seasonal factors that could be making us feel sleepier in the fall? We checked with several sources listed here to verify yes for a few reasons. With cooler temperatures come shorter days. The U.S. Naval Observatory explains the tilt of the earth in the early autumn means later sunrises and earlier sunsets. And that light impacts your circadian rhythm, your body's natural sleep cycle, according to the National Sleep Foundation. It's why you might feel less awake in the morning when it's not as bright out and get tired earlier in the evening. But around here, it's not just the season of apple picking and hay rides. Hay fever kicks in, too, for fall allergy sufferers. Some antihistamines used to treat symptoms can induce drowsiness, according to the Mayo Clinic. But your system's response to allergens can also be draining. Anything that 
activates the body, uses resources, whether it's an illness or an infection or allergies. As the Cleveland Clinic explains, bodies respond to this by making antibodies, which can be a tiring process. And Dr. Alec Gupta says it's hard to catch up. Allergy sufferers also tend to have more trouble sleeping at night. So if you don't sleep well, you feel bad the next day. So that it's, it's multiple factors. With your Verify, I'm Abby Larico. This is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Oh <laughs> my gosh. Get real. No. No. Nope. Just stop. This is a <laughs> sham. It's finally here. Drum roll. Welcome to DBL. For the first time in two weeks, Taylor Swift was not spotted at an NFL game. People were wondering if she was going to show up in Minneapolis to watch Travis Kelsey play against the Vikings, but she was nowhere to be found. A local radio station had some fun with the assumed romance between the two and put up this billboard saying, beat Taylor's boyfriend. <laughs> Travis gave his fans a scare after he, his, he injured his ankle, but then went back into the game to score yet a touchdown. Not I think right. T Swift is very aware of overexposure. I think she climbs to the peak, and I know, Al, you're going to say something, yeah. but she climbs to the very apex, sniffs out that perhaps this was not the right time, takes it down a notch. She is good at the leveling of the temperature, and she read it correctly. Had she been there, uh, too much. Even people like people in the studio are like, too much. Smart to have left this one away. Oh, so she backed off right after the NFL changed the background of their homepage? Yeah, because that's too uh, much hype, and that's I, I overexposure. Think I agree so. Yeah, I think and that she was, did too. I think that was part of you know the issues that people had leading up to this now I do understand that Taylor is a human being and she's entitled to go after love and seek love in whatever way that she can and chooses to but I mean when you are that famous and everything you do will be covered even when it's something you're not doing like when you don't go somewhere it's covered I th this had to eventually be expected and the the, the sadder part of all of this is I'm wondering will this kind of prevent her from having love because anywhere she goes it creates such a stir that it's impossible for other human beings to maneuver even the people that might be interested in pursuing a relationship with her well yeah <laughs> I mean it, when people have such a deep investment in everything that a person does there's no escaping that that's why people talk about like you know, fame being kind of like a, a prison, you know, and, no, and people are like, oh, well, that must be so terrible that you're, you know, everybody knows you and you have all this money. And it's like, yeah, but like when LeBron says he just wants to go to Target, I actually believe him. Yeah. Like, yes. I, I believe that those are things that people really feel like I wish I had that type of freedom and autonomy in my life. You think of money as like the ability to be able to do whatever you want, but now you're locked you're down. You're trapped. That's crazy. So I'm always, it's fascinating to me because people are so fascinated by these things. So many people try to achieve these levels of fame or wealth, but ultimately you do see the other side of fame. And I don't blame anyone who's in that for having, to, like, I don't feel like it's necessarily them constantly trying to make these things happen. I think it's just what it is. What do you guys think of the Olivia, Olivia Wilde tweet? Did you guys see? She reposted this, if you guys didn't see. Um, I, it says, uh, uh, I wish Taylor Swift was in love with a climate scientist, meaning we should be paying more attention. And people wrote, well, she wasn't worried about climate change when she was flying across the country chasing Harry Styles. Right, and she's not worried about it now, Jeff. Yeah, I don't like it. I just don't like it. It's like not a virtue signal. It, I, it it's is. Just like, it really is. is. It, yeah, it's just yeah. like I'm better than you. And it's like if you want to help so bad, go help the climate. You go date a scientist. Don't put that on other people. It's just such a... I don't know. We live in that time right now where everyone's like, way to go, Olivia. That's such a brave thing to say. And it's like, I lived in L.A. with those disgusting people that everything, you know, yeah, they, I don't like it. And it's just like, I'm above you and like, this is better and that's not. And it's like, Right. Well, it's, don't, put well your, I, don't put your beliefs on. It's not I'll take to do with the other side change. here. Even I, just, I, I don't like it. I agree that it was performative. I do. Yeah. 
I think what I took from it was that Taylor Swift and the Taylor effect is so damn contagious that she could literally do anything and then people are going to flock to it. So if she wants to call attention to the climate crisis, if she wants to call attention to which president to endorse, that's the way I took it. But to each its own. <laughs> I, th right. I also think she was putting down football players. Like, you do? Yes. Yeah, because it yes. makes them look dumb. It's like I wish you were in love with like Something a brainiac better. rather than a Neanderthal. I agree. That's right. what I took from that as well. Fair enough. Very elitist. Oh, well, where Will Farrell relived his old school days while visiting his son at college. Will crashed a frat party at uh, USC, where he also went to school. He guest DJed much like his character Frank the Tank from the <laughs> film. Speaking of college, Will's co-star from The Other Guys, Mark Wahlberg, is also weighing in about Greek life. He told the Today Show he never had too many regrets about not going to college until he visited his daughter at her school and thought that the fraternities and sororities looked so much fun. Okay, anybody here, I swam for UCLA. There was a thing where we weren't allowed to be part of the Greek system because of the conflict of schedules. So I don't know anything about this system. Anyone here be a part of it that you know? Or I, no? I don't know totally want it to be, but I'll uh, <laughs> Yeah, no, no, for real. But for he's me, right, a lot of people right. look at me or listen to me and they think I'm a frat boy. And like, mm -hmm. that was like my life. Couldn't be anywhere further from the truth. Kay. I never liked that lifestyle. I never wanted to be like, hey, drink this gallon of milk and you could be my friend and do weird naked stuff together. It's like, <laughs> right. I don't want to be anywhere oh, near you. Oh, talking about the hazing. Yeah. 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 And, and let's not, I don't, I, don't like, I don't know, hold on, I don't like the gasp in this room like everybody like doesn't know what Jeff is talking about. They do. Hazing is very weird no, and like. People have died from naked. it. Well, yes, the drinking and then there's weird stuff. Water. Every, it's supposed to be illegal at universities. Yeah, But it it's all yeah. weird and naked. Well, but it never appealed to me is what <laughs> I'm saying. I don't know why. Yeah, it, yes. it's very let's strange. 100. The milk and the naked. But it appealed to yeah. Tori. Yeah, here's the deal. I went to <laughs> <laughs> milk and Tory naked. Cereal. Give it to me, baby. Here's my thing. I, I went to I went to University of Michigan. From they got a, a great Greek life. Great Greek life. Lots but of I milk. came from lots of milk, lots of naked. But I came from a very tiny, small school. I came to this huge school, and all of a sudden, I didn't know anyone, and no one would be my friend. And had I joined the sorority system, I would have found a, a group of people that now they're friends for life. Not only that, I'm not joking. There's a lot of charity work that these groups do. And if I had taken it seriously, I could have been like the chair of the chair. Charity, the chair, chair of charity, and I could have really done some good work. And instead, I went into a spiraling clinic. Didn't you depression. do a charity this weekend? I sure did, and we're, oh, yeah. we're going to get to that. Okay. Yes, going. but I'm but saying you did that without yeah, the Greek system. I, I really you, managed, could have you managed to secure that. But I'm 41. Didn't you have a meeting at with 19, the Caruso Foundation last week about yes, doing more charity? But at 19, so can't you do this without? Aren't you? Aren't you currently doing this without it, the help of? Ask me if a 19 Tory, 19 year old Tory could have. No. Yes, but I wonder no. if you, you would be help. sitting here now if you had done that because you would have been put into group think. You would have been told how to think, how to drink, uh, uh, what, what to wear on certain weeks and who you like and who you don't like. And that would forever change you as the free thinking person that that's got true. you on this panel. So I'm just saying you I living a life. That. Yeah, that's I, not fair. I'm going to gonna with a say broad brush because like I never I never pledged. Um, I've been approached about pledging as an adult because oh. for a lot of um, sororities it being like a First of all, it's an honor for a sorority to ask you as an adult to join their sorority. And I really respect that because there's so much, um, as you were saying, philanthropy good and work they initiatives do, yeah. and, you know, raising the awareness and the beauty of the culture and all of these different things. So I don't think I understand what you're saying and why and why you're saying it. But I think to paint all of like Greek life with yes. one single brush um, would I, be a mistake. I, I look, I, I, thought, I went Al. to a black college. I participated in some of that. I'll leave it at that for years on end. And the discussion I'll of yeah, but the, the the discussion of philanthropy did not come up. That's fair. At that time, because the cats were seventeen. Guy. You're right. So All let's right. keep it one hundred. Uh, Forty-year-old successful women in the sorority can do a lot of good, but at that point, there was some divisiveness, and there is some exclusion yes. that does cause. That's pain. true too. And there's That's a lot of good things too. Both like can be true. Both can be true. That's right. Both can be true. Great discussion. Okay, so Arnold Schwarzenegger says he is struggling to accept his aging body. Arnold, who is 76, told Howard Stern it's hard for him to look in the mirror after spending most of his life in shape as a bodybuilding champion and an action hero. Watch. I do look, you know, in the mirror and I say, "Yeah, you suck." I look at this body. <laughs> Look at the look at those the spectral muscles that used to be firm and perky and kind of like really powerful with a striation in there. Now they're just hanging there. I mean what the hell is going on here? Wow. 
You know, I never, ever thought about that when I was like 30 years old or 40 years old, that this is going to happen. I really like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Me too. There's something really... Like, just, and if you watch his documentary, you really appreciate his hustle and hard work. But, okay, Jeff, you've been very open about... your I say body dysmorphia because I think you're in great shape. But you will look and oh, you'll yeah. be very hard on yourself. For sure. Does it surprise you that Arnold Schwarzenegger, who still to this day is plant-based, he works out is having a tr trouble looking at himself in the mirror. No, because I think that's aging, right? No matter what you do when you're young, your body's gonna change. Everything's gonna change as you get older. You have to accept that, but I'm very much like Arnold Schwarzenegger in the fact that like things don't look the same and it's twice as hard. Your metabolism slows down. You gotta put in twice the work to do that. But it's his way of thinking and maybe when we get to the next speed, I'll talk about it. But it, it, it attracts me. I like the way he talks, but Erica, you could speak more to this being in this industry. Uh, well, I, I mean, I was only like, for a part. yeah, like <laughs> for a part. Stuff you, were, you were for deep like, into it, yeah, you were. Yeah, you for were, like yeah. uh, five seasons. Um, yeah, at any time you, I think when we start talking about like weight loss and Ozempic and all of these things, these are the things that people talk about combating. It's the idea of seeing your body one way, and then in a different time, you're not seeing it that way right. anymore. And there's almost like an addiction um, to being fit or an addiction to being thin or whatever that might be um, because your body and your mind don't necessarily all come together. Yeah. Especially when it's quick, like you stated before. Yeah. Because in your mind. But like for him, it's been a lifestyle. You right. Know, for his but whole life. your very words, I remember last time we talked about this when Ozempic got brought up, is when people lose weight that rapidly and you had to do that for a fitness competition, competition your mind did not catch up to your body. Yeah. Like for, for years, it didn't catch up until like more recently than when I was actually in it. Like I, I'll never. I never see myself like truly as I am when those things which, like which, change. Which like is that. so interesting because I usually associate that dysmorphia with women, which is wrong on my part, right? Stereotyping. It was really nice to hear Arnold Schwarzenegger, macho, macho man, mm -hmm. saying I'm having problems with my mind and my body and bringing them together. Thank you. I wish he could run for president. Do you think he would win? I think he would. I, I, he's born in Austria, I believe, uh, or yeah, but I, and he can't run because of the Constitution. But I just think he's got that right mix of I'm everybody, I'm somewhat moderate, I'm somewhat liberal, but I'm here to take charge and do it correctly. And, and I he think has a history great. in political office. Yeah, yeah. governor nice. of no. California. Mm -hmm. right. Oh, California. <laughs> he's got, is it California? I've always said California. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> I love you. Coming up on DBL, a female bodybuilder. Speaking of which, in her 60s, will be here live. How she now inspiring others to get fit at any age. Uh, okay. You know, going back to the, the frat yeah. situation, oh, okay. I think so that there it's a it's different oh, yeah. when you're oh, yeah. 17, 18, yeah. and kind of looking for what Tori was looking for, which is acceptance, and that's when you're willing to do almost anything, as opposed to when uh, fraternities and sororities reach out to you later in life, where they're almost all philanthropic and all looking to uh, build yep, their community yep, in one way or great. another in many ways. So okay. I think I think it's almost like the same organizations, but it's almost two different points in your life. Right, but there were some, just, yeah. you know, Ira, on Michigan's campus that were kind of like really nerdy and really philanthropic. And I could have found that because it would have given me a baseline of like a place to come home to. So a lot of you wrote in saying your places have philanthropic help. I could have been such a good like, let's go for the dog rescue. I don't know. I just feel like there was an opportunity really missed. Sorry. Um, real quick, I just wanted to Jeff, that you is that why you didn't do yeah, it? Jeff. No, I just, I never got into like, hey, I'll, I'll do these weird yeah, things and shave I mean. my eyebrow. It and like, there was a lot of naked weird stuff. And and okay. I, it was like, I don't need to do that to be your friend. Right. I'll go yeah. find other friends. Yeah. Plus, I had football and stuff where so I had friends So you had a frat too. at football in a Yeah, way. yeah, yeah. I guess I so. But I never, I know a lot of my right. friends did that stuff too. But even when I went to go visit them, I'm like, this is dumb. This is not me, yeah. man. I did but dumb things. But it's weird because people think that's me. It's yeah. weird. Well, I yeah. mean, it's, it, it's easy to label. Yeah. You don't have to thank your friend. People usually think you know? I was a sorority girl too. Do they? And it never appealed to me. No. It never did. But to your point, I at least went into. You had a group. I had a group. I had no yeah. group. And I went into one. 
it's been really difficult. Oh my God, I could make friends with this. And I couldn't find a friend to save my life. I couldn't find a friend. Wow, that's proves otherwise. Being an authority snake. Welcome back. Our next guest wants you to know that age is a gift, not a limit. At 61 years old, she struts her stuff on stage in bedazzled bikinis and stiletto heels. And with that, she shows everyone that it's never too late to get fit and make the seemingly impossible possible. So please welcome transformation uh, leader and speaker Cheryl Grant. Thank you. Yes. Hello, hello, hello. So happy to be here today. Looking hello. great. You look Honor. insanely wonderful. <laughs> Cheryl. Thank you, darling. Thank you, <laughs> Amazing. You were crowned Miss Olympia in 2017 when you yes. were 55 years old. Why did you want to get into bodybuilder shape and compete in these shows, Miss Cheryl? Um, really quickly, I really um, stumbled upon bodybuilding. I really got into it to transform my body. But what the gift that came for me is I transformed my mind. I was in corporate America and I kept hitting what most would call a glass ceiling. But for women of color, it is a brick ceiling. Mm -hmm. And just kept trying to hit that. And unfortunately, um, I decided, well, I can't change that, but I can change myself. And so I went on this fitness journey and I did just that. Wow. Sure, I love this next part because it really hits home with me. You say it's important to focus on mental health for physical health, why? Because mental is everything. Your mental state of mind, you guys just talked about Arnold Schwarzenegger. Your mental state of mind is everything. I created a platform called FIT. FIT standing for faith, intuition, and tenacity. It's your ability to believe in the poss impossible, learning how to trust yourself, and then the tenacity to just go get it done. The type of work that I'm doing in body transformation, you can't just do it by deciding. I mean, you can go to the gym, and yes, you can work out, and maybe you might might receive some form of transformation, but true transformation starts in your mind first, and then it will transform into your body. I am a firm believer that you have to be mentally fit first. That's the only way that I could have sustained and achieved the title of Miss Olympia mm. is through mental fitness. Wow. I love how you talk about the mind transformation because I tell people that was a piece that when I competed changed my entire life. The setting of the goal and actually following through to attain, achieve that goal such an aesthetic way is transformative. But you tell people that you think that you're or who, what, what do you tell people who think that they're too old to start their mental and physical journey? Okay, yours truly is 61 and mm. about to be 62 in a couple of months. And I became Miss Olympia at 55. If you tell yourself yes, or if you tell yourself no, either way you're right, you get to choose. Mm. The one thing I want to say is that if you want to live the most optimal life at any age, you need to start now by taking care of your body. When you take care of your mind and your body, you have a greater percentage chance of living a life that is beyond phenomenal. I'm gonna tell you something, we're all headed towards aging. It's inevitable. My grandfather used to tell me either you die young or you get old. <laughs> when you get old how do you do it and how do you do it gracefully and I am a champion for that Ooh, yes. absolutely like I, I don't know We're I blown need to away hear, like, here. I, I know I, like I want to go play a football game yeah. after talking to you like <laughs> Seriously, like you are so inspiring, and I love that you tackled the mental aspect of it. So let me ask you on behalf of all our, of our viewers, how does one become mentally fit, and what kind of resources did you do you provide on your website for this? Well, one of the things I've done that I'm really excited about is through my journey of transformation is created a platform that's truly about taking care of yourself first, your mental, and I give you the tools and resources. But once you're mentally fit, it's very important that you put yourself in an environment where you can grow and sustain it. And I've cultivated that. I created something called the C4 matrix. It's simple, but powerful. 
Communication creates connection, connection creates collaboration, and collaboration creates community. With those things, there's a, a, a hidden C, which is change, and that's true transformation. I have a platform that has the resources, no matter if you're in your 20s, your 30s, or your 40s, or your 50s, to help meet you where you are. We're all different. We all have different needs along this life's journey, and I'm here to get you fit no matter where you are in life. Wow. Cheryl, you have such a a gift just speaking Dang. I mean you do every single person in the studio is now Jeez. motivated okay so as we mentioned you have been crowned Miss Olympia Congrats. Are you I know are you preparing for any future competitions right now and then sidebar when people meet you and find out your age <laughs> how are the reactions are right they? Okay, so a couple of different things. As long as I can hang on to the reactions of people in my age, I'm going to do that, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you gotta hang on to that. That's a good feeling. And, and, and if it ever changes, I'll call you and let you know. I'm not sure what that is going to be like. But um, I want to say to your audience is that um, for me, when I get a response from people about my age, I want to say to you that some of it may be genetic, but a lot of it is how I take care of myself. And you too can have this. I can say on my platform, I went viral on an Instagram, um, literally like three, four, five million views more than once because people couldn't believe my age. And a lot of it has to do with how I live my life. I take care of myself mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and physically. And I make sure to, to, to let go of the stresses in life so that you can live your most optimal life. And what you focus on expands. So I want to invite you to focus on things that are going to nourish you, that's going to uplift you, that's going to encourage you. And you can find that all at CherylGrant.com. And I want to thank you for having me here today. I mean, what a blessing for me to be able to share my story with you. So thank you. Thank you. You are a ray of light. Good yeah. Lord. I, just, I, I think we're just smiling and not talking, which is not part of our job. Dude, I'm working but out over here. It's like, who is this woman? Oh, my goodness. She's coming back. Yeah. Our senior yeah. executive producer said she's coming back. Yeah. Yeah. She is. Cheryl, thank you for joining us on DBL today. We didn't get to the future competitions part, but good luck with future competitions. Yes. And to our viewers, visit CherylGrant.com to learn more about Cheryl and her Fit for Life platform. Thank you again, Cheryl. Congrats on all we'll your success. You thank you. Congrats. We'll be right thank back. You. Blessings always. Thank you. We were sent a series of questions by viewer Lori W about the COVID-19 vaccine. So we are getting the facts and answering her questions about the new vaccine. Our source is Dr. Pyle Coley, Yale Medicine and the CDC. According to the CDC, the new COVID-19 vaccine targets a sub variant of the Omicron variant. The CDC says this should also work against other circulating variants. Lori W wanted to know when should she and her husband get the vaccine because they want it to be most effective. Dr. Coley says if you're waiting to get your shots until November or December, you should rethink that decision. Your peak antibodies are about two to four weeks after you get boosted, but they don't just go away after those four weeks. You actually have a plateau. <laughs> if people want to time their shot perfectly for holiday travel, Dr. Coley says now is the time to get your shot. By Halloween, you'll have peak antibodies and you'll keep them through the Christmas time. A study from Yale Medicine says the updated vaccines are not expected to prevent all cases of COVID. The aim is to reduce severe illness, hospitalization, and even death. According to the CDC, there was a surge in North Carolina COVID-19 hospitalizations at this time last year and in 2021, with most of the spikes happening around December. Lori W. also wanted to know how long the protection lasts. Dr. Coley says after the initial spike in antibodies two to four weeks after you get boosted, you'll start to plateau. After about four months, you'll start to see a decrease in those antibodies. And if you're wondering what time of day you should get your vaccine, Dr. Coley has an answer for that too. So if you think about our immune system, it follows a circadian rhythm okay. and it's actually maximal when we're sleeping. So if you go in the afternoon to get your shot, that means that's really gonna sort of kick in most when you're sleeping. With your Verify Fact Check, I'm Megan Bragg.
Welcome back to DBL. Do you suffer from lower back pain? If so, what's causing it might surprise you. It is time for some joint and muscle support brought to you by Omega XL. So according to experts, a hip injury can mimic back pain. Right-sided pain could also be linked to kidney and gallbladder problems. One-sided pain and hip pain can be linked to things like muscle strains, a pinched nerve, arthritis, or herniated discs. Omega XL has improved the lives of millions of consumers, supported by 30 years of clinical research. Omega XL's powerful and proven benefits have transformed the lives of athletes, celebrities, and dedicated daily users. Call 800-725-2612 or visit OmegaXL.com for more information. We'll be right back. A viral Instagram post claims people who weigh more than 200 pounds need a longer needle for vaccines injected into the muscle. One verified viewer emailed us to ask if this is true. So let's verify. Is a longer needle recommended for people over a certain weight? Our sources are the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CVS Pharmacy, and Dr. Elon Shapiro, Medical Affairs Officer at Alta Med Health Services. Many vaccines, like the flu shot and COVID-19, must be injected into the muscle. For most people, a one-inch needle is long enough to get through the skin and fat to get there. But the CDC says vaccinators might need to use a longer needle to reach the muscle in men who are heavier than 260 pounds or women who weigh more than 200 pounds. The worst case scenario where you actually put the vaccine into, instead, of, instead of actually going inside of the muscle and solving the fat, well, your body doesn't learn that much from it. However, Shapiro says since everyone's body is different, not everyone who weighs over the recommended limits will need the longer needle. CVS tells Verify pharmacists use their clinical judgment when selecting which needle length to use for each patient. So, yes, the CDC does recommend that people over a certain weight receive vaccines with longer needles. Talk with your pharmacist or doctor if you have questions about whether you might need a longer needle. With your Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. Within hours of seeing the first almost unbelievable images out of Israel, misinformation started to spread online about what the United States is going to do to help. The claim that the United States swiftly pledged $8 billion in military aid to Israel, repeated in posts all over the platform formerly known as Twitter and seemingly confirmed in this White House press release. But we checked with several sources to verify this announcement is fake. It's nowhere on the White House or Department of State website and instead appears to be a doctored version of this press release issued over the summer announcing the authorization of U.S. aid to Ukraine in that ongoing war. $400 million worth, not $8 billion. The United States does provide billions of dollars in support to Israeli Defense Forces each year, outlined in this Congressional Research Service report, as part of a series of agreements dating back decades. Quote, Israel is the largest cumulative recipient of U.S. foreign assistance since World War II. And the White House is underscoring its continued support for the people of Israel. Talking about his administration's communications with Israeli leadership over the weekend, President Biden said, quote, we'll make sure that they have the help their citizens need. So we'll keep an eye out for verified announcements of next American steps. With your Verify, I'm Abby Larico. Uh, that's the end of the show. I just want to thank you, Tori, because at the top of the show, you were very thoughtful and nuanced in your commentary regarding Israel. Our thoughts and prayers go to everybody in Israel, all the in innocent victims out there. We are with you. We will see you tomorrow. Thanks.
where hope finds help, where courage meets conviction, where makers make fans. We are Tegna, a family of local and national media brands that bring us together, serving the greater good of our communities, where national know-how backs local business. Be in good company with Tegna. Do it. <laughs> I think our show's a little different. We can say what we want and go deeper than other shows can. Our chemistry is just so on. Sometimes I'm a little mad at my co-host, Jeff. And my co-hosts have to trust that I'm gonna bring it and be 100% all the time. There's zero filter with us, whether you love us or hate us or you can't stop watching us. DBL is on. <laughs>